Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about emergency lighting options for things like power outages, blackouts, and then also for more long-term situations. Before we get too deep into this video, I just want to let y'all know that this is not sponsored. So any specific items that I show in this video are things that I picked up with my own money. Some of them I've owned for a while, others I got specifically for this video to kind of check out for myself and also give y'all some ideas that may Maybe you haven't thought of yet. Flashlights and headlamps are the most basic part of your emergency lighting plan and they're good for both blackouts as well as just normal everyday carry kind of things. Flashlights, they're very easy to just keep on your person on a daily basis and they provide just directional light wherever you need it. Now if you're wanting something that you can use hands-free, obviously headlamps are going to be the better option. You can use those if you're needing to make repairs at night or also if you're doing something like hunting. Maybe you hunt it all day and you're going to go back to your truck at night and you need something that will allow you to kind of scan the area, see if there's something like feral hogs or other wild animals and also be able to keep both hands on your rifle. And I think it's a really good idea to keep a flashlight on your person at all times, but also have a headlamp nearby, maybe in the glove box of your car, or maybe in an EDC bag that you can access easily if you need to do something hands-free. And when it comes to selecting flashlights and headlamps, my recommendation would be to get something you can afford that gets good ratings. I know that high-end, expensive, tactical flashlights, they get a lot of airtime on YouTube and they get a lot of publicity. But really, you don't have to spend over $100 to get a flashlight that's going to do most of what you would need it to do. Like this Maglite XL50, I've had it for years, I have dropped it, I've just beat the mess out of it, and it still continues to work fine. It's not as bright as some other flashlights, it's not as flashy, doesn't have as many modes and features, but it does work even after being abused through just normal everyday use. And as far as how many lights to get, I would recommend having at least one decent quality flashlight for every mature member of your family that's going to be adults or maybe some older kids that can take care of something. But then also have some cheaper flashlights, things that you can keep in like drawers or maybe just keep on hand so where if there is a power outage, then you can have something that you can give to maybe younger members of your family that you're not not going to be too heartbroken if they disappear. The next level of your emergency lighting plan should consist of LED lanterns. While flashlights and headlamps are good personal lighting options that can give you directional lighting wherever you may need it, LED lanterns are more area lighting. You can use them to light up an entire room in your home or maybe an area outside. LED lanterns are very bright and they're also very efficient and don't produce a whole lot of extra heat which that's very advantageous if you're dealing with a power outage maybe during a warmer time of the year or if you just live in a warmer climate because you don't need your lighting just heating up your home even more than what it already is. And if you're in the market for LED lanterns, you have a couple of different options. You can either get one or two fairly decent, pretty nice LED lanterns, or you can get several cheaper ones. One example of a nice LED lantern would be the Streamlight Siege. This is the one that has 540 max lumens. It uses just normal D-cell batteries, and it has both white and red light modes, including SOS. And it also has other additional features like being able to remove the globe so that you can flood an area with light, and it also has clips that you can use to hang it. And I got this as a replacement for my other LED lantern that I've shown in some other videos. It started to have some switch problems. So if that had been the only one that I had, that would have been a big problem. So that's another reason why it might be worth looking into getting some smaller, cheaper LED lanterns that you can keep as backups. Something like these lanterns lanterns might be worth looking into. They came in a four pack, which is good because it gives you redundancy, but also if you have a larger family where each member might want to have a lantern to keep in their own room, then you'll be able to do that for not a whole lot of money. These are just generic sliding lanterns like you would find pretty much anywhere, and they can produce up to 280 lumens when in lantern mode, and they can also be used as a flashlight. It has a red strobe light mode, which would be useful as an emergency signal, along with a red SOS mode. It has magnets on the bottom so you can secure the lantern to something like the hood of your car if you needed to work on that. Lanterns produced by power tool companies are good options also. They're usually very bright. And also, since they're designed to be used with power tool batteries, and those usually have larger capacities, those lights can last for quite a while. And they may have additional features, like being able to charge your cell phone from a USB port. And kind of the same rules go with lanterns as went with flashlights and headlamps. 
get something that you can afford that gets good ratings. Now when it comes to batteries for your flashlights, headlamps, and LED lanterns, if you have a solar generator, I would recommend focusing most of your resources on getting rechargeable batteries. You can get double A's, triple A's, and then even larger D cell and C cell rechargeables as well. But if you don't have a solar generator, focus most of your resources on getting as many disposable batteries as you can, but also get some rechargeables as well, especially for your most used devices. That's what I did before I got a generator or a solar generator. I would use rechargeable batteries as my everyday users, and that would allow me to save my stockpile of disposable batteries for actual emergencies. For rechargeable batteries, try to get low self-discharge NIMH or nickel metal hydride batteries like those produced by Eneloop. Now they don't produce like D cell or C cell rechargeable batteries, but they do make spacers that you can slide their AA batteries into, which will allow you to use them in devices that require those larger battery sizes. But you can always get those larger batteries from other manufacturers. If you have devices that use special proprietary batteries, like some kinds of flashlights, be sure to have extras of those on hand. And that also goes for power tool batteries as well. Rechargeable light bulbs are another kind of cool emergency lighting option, and I actually didn't know about these until several months ago when somebody mentioned in the comment section of another video. But they're basically light bulbs that fit in just standard sockets, but they have a battery backup built into them. So if you lose power while an appliance that has one of those light bulbs in it is being used, then it'll just kick over to that battery backup and you can still control it from like the switch on like if it's a lamp or the switch on the wall if it's in your closet or something like that. And to test them out, I put them in my bathroom's light fixture and killed the main breaker to the house. And when I did that, the lights turned off for a split second, but they turned back on using their own battery power. When they do that, they do dim a little bit, but they can last between three and four hours, at least according to the manufacturer. The ones that I have, they're a little bit longer than regular light bulbs, so they won't work in enclosed fixtures just because there won't be room enough for them. And it also said on the box that they wouldn't work in multi-bulb fixtures, although I was able to get it to work in my bathroom's light fixture. I just couldn't mix and match those bulbs and regular light bulbs at the same time. They kind of acted a little weird then. But I really wanted them in the bathroom because that room is like the only place in our house that doesn't have windows in it, so if we lose power while one of us is in the shower, that would be very annoying. If you want to use it in an unplugged lamp, then you have to attach the included plug cap to it. This is going to close the circuit and allow the light to work, and each bulb also came with an end cap with a switch that lets you use the bulb outside of a fixture or lamp, and you can also hang it up with the included hook. The light bulbs recharge just through normal use if you have them installed in a fixture or a lamp. And similar to these, you can also find night lights that have battery backups as well. And while LED lights should be a big part of your emergency lighting plan, it's also a good idea to have things like candles, hurricane lanterns, and oil lamps. Because in addition to being able to provide a small amount of light, they can also provide a small amount of heat, which is important during cold weather power outages and they have the added benefit of being able to work after an EMP because there's nothing electronic about them. But you do have to be very cautious when using these because they use open flames which could cause fires. So you want to make sure that you have some uh, fire extinguishers and then also operational smoke alarms and carbon monoxide detectors just to keep you and your loved ones safe. And it's important to realize that with these, they aren't going to produce nearly as much light as something like an LED lantern would. So go into it knowing that ahead of time. But you can like place something reflective behind them, like maybe put them in front of a mirror so that you can reflect that light back where you need it to kind of get a little bit more light out of it. But of course you want to make sure that anything that you stick it in front of is not flammable. Individual candles produce the least amount of light, but if you group a bunch of them together, then you can get a little bit more. If you don't have candles, then things like crayons work as decent backups, and you can also use something else like a glob of Vaseline and also Crisco as candles as well. Oil lamps and hurricane lanterns can provide a little bit more light, but that's going to depend on things like the size of the lantern that you're using and then also the fuel. Larger lanterns use larger wicks, which means that there's a larger surface area burning, which 
means brighter light. And then kerosene, it actually burns brighter than lamp oil, but it kind of smells a little bit more. So you got to kind of juggle with, do you really want a brighter light, but have to mess with that additional smell as well. If you plan on using these, be sure to have plenty of lamp oil, then also spare wicks to keep them going as long as possible. Now, a special kind of oil lamp is called an Aladdin lamp. You don't see them that much because they're very expensive, but they do burn much brighter. Candle lanterns are another good lighting method that can also produce heat. And with these, you can use just the standard nine hour candles. You can get 12 hour beads wax candles and you can also get some with citronella in them if you're trying to keep mosquitoes away but one thing that's nice at least about the larger ones is that you can use them to help you heat up food now you're not going to be able to cook a full meal on it it's not going to get that hot but if you want to do something like heat up a can of soup or chili it's going to be perfectly fine for that it took me around 20 minutes to heat up a can of chili to where it was warm enough to actually eat and enjoy. And that's nice because if you're already using the candle lantern for light, there's no need to waste fuel for like a butane or propane camp stove. I like to get the smaller version to keep in my truck in case I have some sort of cold weather breakdown. And the main downside to these is that the candles, they are proprietary and they are fairly expensive per candle. Propane lanterns are another option. You can also lump the old white gas lanterns into this as well. They're going to be a lot brighter than things like candles and oil lamps, and they can also generate heat. But the big downside to them is, especially with propane lanterns, you are going to be very limited on the fuel that you can use for them. Now with the older white gas lanterns, of course, you can use a couple of different fuel sources in those. But if using this type of lighting, you really need to make sure that you have plenty of fuel and then also spare mantles. Solar pathway lights are popular with a lot of preppers. People like that they can set them outside and let them charge during the day and then bring them inside and use them at night and then just kind of do that on an ongoing basis. Now also the brighter motion activated security lights, those are good because they don't require grid power to operate and they can let you know if somebody is on your property. It's also a good idea to have some chemical light sticks on hand. These work well in things like bug out bags or kits, provide a little bit of additional light and they're also safe to use if there's something like a gas leak, you don't have to worry about them causing a spark and they can also be used for things like signaling. If you want to learn more about how you can get more prepared ahead of this winter or you just want to see more things about power outage tools and tips, go ahead and click on these cards. Thank you all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.